So, uh, what are we doing here right now? I don't know what we're doing here right well, now. I don't know, but I'd like you to inform me why I'm not at home playing Helldivers 2 right now. Yeah, that or dinner, man. I haven't had dinner in a long time now, it seems like. I had a cheese stick and pepperoni for lunch, and it's kind of where it just went from there. But anyways, yeah. uh, this is the first Epic Podcast coming to you from the Epic Shop, and uh, this is Two Dudes, One Wrench. That's why we have a... Craftsman wrench. We came up with this about five minutes ago. We did, we did. And this is a craftsman wrench on the table, not a snap-on wrench. Yeah, so I don't this know is, if you want to this address is a, that. This is a wrench yeah. that most people can buy. Yes. Yeah. If there's still craftsmen or seers near you. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That'll last. They did close people down. Can, people can buy it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, the topic for this podcast is, um, it's, a, it's a little out there, but we wanted to uh, talk about Mojave. So it's the tale of romance and seduction. In the Mojave is what we're doing oh. today. Um, so I just told you that for the first time. You have no idea what you're that doing here. That explains a lot to what the vehicle is behind Yes, yeah, why we have the vehicle here behind us. But uh, so what do we get questions about all the time? We get tons of questions. Phone calls come in. Right now it seems to be from Texas. I don't know why we're getting so many calls from Texas. But um, yeah, people are phoning us about. Oh, so you mean the question I get asked the most besides where Sean's mom lives. Yeah, that question. But, okay, uh, so sec the second most question. The most common yeah. question yeah. I get multiple times a week is on our Frankenstein or Frankenlift Mojave video. Ah, Frankenlift. And when did we do that? It was like 2021. Yeah, it was like two years. Ago. Actually, we did a video before that because we did one before yeah. I had this one. That's true. Yeah, we did, didn't we? And then there was Frankenlift 2.0, 3.0, XL, yeah. Drubble yeah. XL, Trojan. I don't know. A whole bunch of A lot of stuff happened. Even Mojave's. But no, I find a lot of people, you're right, we get a lot of calls, uh, tons of calls about the Mojave Jeep. I think it's the most misunderstood Jeep it that's is out there. Definitely um, the most misunderstood yeah, people, child of the Jeep family. Yeah, people just don't get it. But um, yeah, so Mojave, maybe let's just uh, start off and just talk about a few things about the Mojave. Like, what's different with it? Like, when you buy a Mojave, what are you getting that's different than a Rubicon or the anything? The stitch else? is orange. That's true. The stitching is orange. So, the stitching is orange. Yep. Most important thing. Yeah. Now, they are basically the same price. At least they were up in Canada at the time I bought mine. There was yeah. no difference in price yeah, at all. So, yeah. what you're getting. Is a really cool but really heavy hood. Yes, that's Because they chose to use steel. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe it was cheaper at the time. Uh, or maybe they really wanted more downward force when you hit a bump. Maybe. I don't know. So you get the hood. That's the 392 hood, right? It's similar to the 392 Yes, it's identical hood. Yeah. to the 392 yeah. hood except the one plastic piece. And the plastic piece on the front of the hood does nothing, right? It does nothing but attract attention. Yes, that's true. And catch bugs. Yeah, it definitely does that. So... Uh, on the inside, we'll go to the inside. So yep. inside, it is covered in orange stitching, which is really nice, unless yep. you don't like the color orange, which yep. I don't like the color orange, surprisingly. Yeah, I Yet don't care for I it too much I did put either. a lot of it on here. No. So next, the seats are more bolstered, because they expect you to drive more aggressively with right. the Mojave. Because right. the Mojave is basically Jeep's answer to the Ford Raptor. I don't know if you ever heard of that vehicle. It was yep. one years ago, had class action lawsuits for the frame going. Yeah. But uh, they've since fixed some of that with a couple tack welds. Yeah. So you get more bolstered seat in orange. It right. says Mojave on the seat. It so does. it doesn't yeah. confuse you. It does you. say that. Yeah. It has a nice steering wheel. The steering wheel is really nice. It's a lot, a little bit thicker. It's more aggressive. Right. Once again, it's leading to aggressive driving. It's right. really sending you down that path. Yes. Uh, you get a textured gray dash yep, that's as right, opposed yeah. to a red dash. So it's pretty good. Now, onto the rest of the vehicle, you get the frame has been strengthened in multiple places. Right. The What about the knuckles up front? We, the knuckles yeah. Yeah. are cast steel. Right. Not yeah. cast right. aluminum. And right. for those of you out there in the internet world, steel is stronger. Steel is um, stronger. Then they made stronger brackets for the front shocks. Yep. And used a bigger bolt. So they did right. that. Right. They then give you a factory version of Fox 2.5 shocks right? and a coil to match it. Now the first generation, like this one, my coils were silver. They aren't anymore. Right. Why? Don't know. But the shocks and coils were designed together. That's why you right. get such a beautiful ride out of the factory. Now the other thing it comes with is the speed bumps up front, the Fox speed oh, bumps. Oh yes, yeah, right. And that speed bump is the only reason it is taller in the front because the speed bump has like almost one inch billet aluminum piece right. that the coil sits on be the way they mount it. So that's why automatically out of the factory, this looks more aggressive than a Rubicon. Right. So automatically you look at it and go, oh, that's mean, I should buy that one. Yeah. Maybe you should, 
if you know what you're going to do with it. Right, right. So you've got those, you've got the other parts, but what do you lose? Yeah, what if, do you lose when you go to a Mojave? So yeah. in a Mojave, you end up with, you get the rear locker. Right. You get front and rear diffs like the Rubicon, except for no front locker. No front locker, right. So you also get no four to one transfer case, which is probably one of the best parts about the Rubicon there is, is right. that bulletproof right. four to one that we've even stuffed a demon in front of multiple times and right. it hasn't blown into shrapnel. Right. That's pretty good. Um, it also doesn't have the sway bar electric disc to connect. And, right, yeah. And whether yeah. you love or hate that thing, that thing is the best sway bar on the market if you have trouble with electronics, just yeah. unbolt them, yeah. throw them, yeah. and put a knob on and there. And then put a knob on there that you can spin from Evo, yeah. or they even have one that operates with air. Yeah, that's true. Why yeah. on earth would you want to fight with manual sway bar links? Yeah. But they didn't need a sway bar disconnect on this because the shocks yeah. do not have any travel. Yeah. So if you put sway bar disconnects on a Mojave and try and do like a flex ramp, you don't get very far. No, you don't. No, you don't. A and then a part of the suspension too is maybe just talk a bit about the suspension because the Fox suspension, again, out of the box, a Mojave is the best driving Jeep. It drives so well out Agreed. of the box. 100%. If you, if you don't put any weight on it. It is so comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. The downside is if you load up a fat passenger, yes. the whole thing goes out of the, just out of whack. Yeah. Yeah. So it is very weight driven, which is obvious because if you have a nice, soft, comfortable ride, that automatically right. means you have soft coils and you have very dampened shocks. So, and I found this out when we did yeah. our, yeah. basically our Franken lift, where we lifted it as best possible to maintain every little piece. Right. And when I mean every little piece, so we did shock extensions. Nobody made any for the rear except for Evo at the time, so we used those. Fronts, we used Terraflex. We machined them out to fit the bigger bolt that they use on the right. front shocks right. we spoke of earlier. Right, yeah. We then put bump stops according to the amount we stacked up the shocks. We then added the appropriate spacers front and rear to space the shocks exactly the amount. We then added track bars so that we could center the axle. We added a track bar bracket to center the rear axle, um, among other little things. Yeah. And sway bar disconnects. What I tried was the Apex ones because I still did yeah, not. Yeah, I remember those. Those are cool. They were neat. Yeah, they they were, were designed cool. by the same guy who worked to design yeah. the Falcon shocks, which is you could tell by looking at them. That's where that came from. Yeah. Um, but we took it on. I took it on a trip right away. And honestly, I was hitting the bump stop so often yeah. on gravel roads and cross ditches. It drove me insane. And most people don't realize it only comes with plastic bumpers, yes. right? So we're really talking about the weight. So the moment you even add, we've done like the Mopar bumper, where so you add a winch on the front with a Mopar bumper. Yeah. So what we did with this Mojave, yeah. we added the Mopar bumper to the yeah. front in a yeah. stubby fashion with a synthetic winch, 12,000 yeah. pound winch. So fairly lightweight combination. And that did it. And honestly, yeah. I was it was bobbing out on speed bumps and stuff. Yeah. Then we added the rear Rubicon bumper, so it had the steel bumper on the yeah, rear. I remember that. Yeah. And all in all, I did a diamond back tunnel cover yeah. so I could put my spare on top of it. And that was it. I didn't run yeah. a rooftop tent. I didn't run a bunch of overland gear. Yeah. And I was it just did not operate well. Yeah. It was okay around town, but spacing it did still cause extra leverage on components so it didn't right. drive exactly the same yeah so the mojave in my honest opinion is a one-trick pony yeah that's that's the way to say it right so i think people buy it because it's got the cool hood it's got the cool seats it's got the steering wheel it's got different wheels on it um it looks cool Again, yep. I kind of think it's funny that they made the whole thing to a Pentastar, but we'll get to that in a little bit later as far as engines and what happened there. Um, but as far as, yeah, it's kind of a one-trick pony. So the moment you want to use it for overlanding, so that's the questions we get all the time. So people phone and they say, hey, I'm just going to, you know, should I buy the AEV spacer lift or should I get the Terraflex spacer lift or whatever it is and I want to put a rack on the back of my truck or I want to put 37s on it and I want to go use it, is again, they're not understanding what the truck was designed for. I think it's been a failure in Jeep marketing. They just haven't got that And I've across. had the phone call so many times Times yep. that I now have to stop them abruptly, or I'm yeah. going to be there for. You're going to be there for minutes. 45 minutes, just yeah. So usually I just go, "Do you really like how your Jeep drives?" Yeah, yeah. Then don't touch it. Yeah, just leave it alone. Just leave it <laughs> alone. If you have a Mojave, just leave it Do alone. Do you want to put a winch on it? Yeah. Or a tent? You bought the wrong vehicle. Then you have to yeah. gut the suspension. Yeah. But yeah. I paid so much for that suspension. Well, it's you hard really for people. Didn't, though. It's hard. Well. 
Honestly. Again, you look in Canada, the Mojave versus the Rubicon is a little bit cheaper, but you're, you're, you're kind of in the same price bracket. So, But you did get yeah. a bunch of upgrades that the Rubicon didn't have. True. So I don't think people made it wrong. I think you just yeah. have to understand from the get-go what, where your game plan is yeah, going to have game to plan be. Is, yeah. You're not going to just like lift it and be done. Yeah. Depending on what you want to do, you may have to add... Uh, some kind of a sway bar system, a front locker maybe. Now, right. most people, especially overlanding, you're yeah. not going to put a front locker no, in. No, most people don't need most a front locker. Most of the Toyotas out there only have a rear locker. They're yeah. overlanding. Yeah. so and they're fine. Um, but realistically, like... But yeah, if you, like, you're right. If you want to go and do the tent and the rack and do all the overlanding, like the camping, and you want to yeah. start doing that, um, you need to throw out the suspension. And that is hard for people because they spend all this money on it. I want the fuck They think they paid it a premium, yeah. and that was only in the shocks and coils. Yeah. Yeah. And it isn't. Yeah. It is def like if you want to put a Mojave hood onto yeah. a like say we did the AMW builds, yeah. and you put a Mojave hood totally onto something yeah. in Canada, that's like five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's expensive yeah. to get all the pieces to have them painted to match and put them on. You're yeah. at like five grand. Yeah, yeah. So if you take that into account, I got a wicked hood and a better interior, not including the frame stiffening, the stronger knuckles. Yeah. I don't see you losing because you just didn't use the shocks and coils. Because you buy a Rubicon, you're not using the shocks and coils. Yeah. You're getting rid of those. We have lots of takeoffs here. Um, we have. Yeah, so generally people come in and we usually see a Mojave kind of just resting near its bump stops or it looks like it's squatting and it hardly has any weight on it at all yep. and they're wanting to add way more stuff to it. Um, and so we're able to kind of talk to people. Again, we're the only guys that have owned one of these and do this stuff on a regular basis in our area and so we kind of as you said we started with a spacer lift we started in replacing everything um there's a reason for that that's how we learn and that's how we make sure we pass on the information yeah. to everybody right because i don't want people to make the wrong make a mistake spend money where they don't need to more importantly i want them to have a safe fun driving experience so a lot of times people come in here and we're just like yeah got the suspension so if we're gonna get rid of the suspension take the fox coils out takes the fox shocks out you know typically what are we doing so our, our go-to suspension, we're going to do the same similar thing we do to a lot of people that come here. Yeah. Now, take tents and everything out of the equation. Say you just wanted to lift it. What I'm going to do, we're going to do a TerraFlex base lift. We don't really do a lot of their big lifts you see with all the different names because yeah. a lot of those parts, most people don't utilize, so they don't need them. That's like the RT3 or the CT3 yeah. or whatever. So I like, would rather yeah. get you out there and you have extra money for gas because it turns out it's not free. It's not free. Um, so we're going to use gas that. Is expensive. We're going to just start with the base <laughs> kit. The base kit does your yeah. coils, your sway bar links, your bump stop extensions, right. your track bar right. bracket in the front. Then what we're going to do, we're going to throw the rear track bar bracket on because the thing is a thing of beauty. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Then we do the drop brackets on pretty much everything that ever leaves our building unless it's a long arm conversion. Right, yeah. And they do totally different things than just an adjustable arm yeah. and that's why we stick to doing three and up lifts because it drives so much better when you can mm -hmm. use those brackets so we get those in then it's your choice on shocks well you bought a mojave you probably should buy a decent shock not a mono tube you should probably get an adjustable so we look at the falcon three threes. yeah the three threes then we have to get a kit to press the bus bushings out of the front so we can fit the bushings that are meant for the size bolts the mojave uses right yeah so we quote that in there we do a Nexus steering stabilizer of some kind because they could always use a little bit better steering on all the new Jeeps. They're yeah. better with the new steering box from 21 and up, but it could always be a little stiffer once you get bigger tires. Right. And then yeah. when you get to certain level of big tires, we're talking PSC Hydro Assist or you're not turning yeah. on a rock yeah. or possibly a parking block at Costco. What comes up a lot too is people are like, why do I have to do a three and a half inch lift? Because that sounds so tall. I don't want to do yeah. a three and a half. Can I just do a two and a half? And typically we're saying no, because we want you to use the drop brackets, right? So maybe just yep. talk a bit about that too, because so that comes up a lot. price the way we do it, it will cost you about 80 bucks more to do a two and a half than a three and a half. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And that's because a set of control arms, lower control arms to help for the, the faster yeah. costs a little bit more than the drop brackets, but only does one thing. Right. Yeah. So we get you some caster but we don't help all the angles yeah. of the control arms to be more parallel to the ground right. and handle better and also have a better pinion angle. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. why we try to do a three and a half. Now we always do have some customers because we do live in a larger metropolis yeah, type underground, city. Underground, underground parking. Underground parking is yeah. an issue out here, guys. Some people only get like six feet to yeah. park. And yeah, that means you can't even own a gladiator because they're over six feet stock. Right. Yeah. So that's their way of forcing us into little tiny electric cars up here. 
I just tell people to get a different home. Yes. Yeah. Usually the best upgrade for a Jeep up. is a new home. You need to with get a larger new home garage. With if a that's a possibility. Garage. Yeah. So short uh, garages do not. But if that's with. not, we try and accommodate you the best we can. Yeah. So that you can still do this, the things you want to do with your friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. All in all, the biggest problem with the Mojave is it didn't have enough power for the vehicle it wanted to compete with. Yes, that's true. That, so the Raptor, even though it doesn't have a V8 anymore for some crazy some reason, crazy you reason. can get a regular F-150 with a 5 liter. Yeah, with the Coyote 5. Yeah. But you have to use the twin turbo, and yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got lots of power. Still sounds horrible. Yeah. I love Hemi. So, yeah. So, yeah, so maybe before we get to that is behind us here is a uh, Mojave that we originally built and put together in 2021, and it's since gone on to its forever home. Um, and uh, we'll talk a bit about that. Uh, a lot of things we get is we always do these fancy graphics and we code name everything. Like you have to have a name for every one of your Jeeps. And so we call this one Fluffy and it's got a yeah, cool werewolf on it. It's a lot it. easier to remember Fluffy than the VIN number. That's true, that's true. What VIN so number is that? Oh, you mean Fluffy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so people ask us all the time, hey, where do you guys get your graphics done? Those kind of things, we basically do it ourselves. Um, so we have somebody in the Philippines who basically takes our wild ideas um, and we give them a bunch of very crude drawings and we say, hey, we'd like something to look like this and they draw us a graphic and we go back and forth a few times. Um, and then we use our friends over in Maple Ridge at Pyramid Signs and Graphics to actually print it and pop it on there. Um, but yeah. What Paul means by the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. We didn't fly over there and find a street artist. No, we did not. Uh, we like supporting small business since we're a small business. So we use a, uh, an app called Fiverr. Yep, use Fiverr. And you can yep. find somebody that will do anything above board yes. um, for you, whether it is some accounting or some video editing or some graphic design, you can find somebody. And we found a couple people we like to use yep. and we work well together back and forth with the little edits until it's where we want it. And then we end up probably editing the colors a bit when we get the file. Yeah, just to match and the And then we the have our, yep. one of the shops locally we like to use, Pure Image, uh, yep. smack the graphic on some ridiculous location. So, kids can yeah, point people, at it uh, while they drive with their parents people will not miss our vehicles that's for sure but well, um, well in the sea of teslas the sea of teslas that are out here right it's now. a lot easier to find this in the parking lot yeah it's pretty cool yeah so this is a fluffy a 2021 mojave um and sting gray we love that color it's a great color yeah and so we kind of went through as we said the suspensions those kind of things and then we kind of as you started alluding to is the engine is the pentastar is so lackluster and i think that's what's really hurting the just the gladiator in general right now it needs more power uh, it needs more power and so we ended up uh going to a supercharger setup um and so that was uh, that was fun. So maybe let's talk a bit about what we did there. Because we get a lot of questions because we have uh, some old videos there from three years ago, two years, three years ago, uh, that show us putting the supercharger on. And people are always asking us, I'm going to do a supercharger. Is that a good idea? And our answer is, no, um, don't do it. And so again, you don't know until you try. So realistically, we went to a company that yeah. we knew everyone was using back in the JK days. Because yes. those yeah. days were different. Yeah. Um, and we, there wasn't enough research out and form information at the time right. for us to get the proper information right. to make our decision. So, but all said and done, the engine that's under the hood of this vehicle is not the same engine that's under the hood of a JK. No, even though it's uh, a 3.6 liter Pentastar, Pentastar, it's quite a it bit different. Metallurgy is different. Like, Metallurgy is yeah. different. The yeah. oil it takes is different. Yeah. The thinness of things is different, all to make it lighter and more fuel efficient. Correct. Yeah. Which also makes it not want to handle boost really well. Yeah. So learn oh. from my experiences <laughs> that lasted and a year. That was an experience. That it was it was driving right when we had it in there for what maybe a couple of days a month. We had it driving right because it kind of depends on. It was your, about a couple weeks at a time. Yeah, you know, like your it depends on your elevation you're at. It did not it like elevation. Did change. not like elevation at all. And this is where we live. We live in British Columbia. We have mountains everywhere. So every time we drive yeah, up a mountain, out, it would. Yeah. When I yeah. go to the t yeah. when I go to the Starbucks drive through, I have to change like a thousand feet of elevation. That's true. That's true. Like it's it's, yeah. it's crazy out here. It's yeah. kind of like Colorado yeah. but we have yeah. an ocean yes <laughs> so <laughs> Oh man! But you know the the number one thing I loved about it is the sound. I love scaring it the crap out of people. It sounded super cool, oh, and the, the dump sound. valve the dump was, was amazing. Wild. Oh, it was so amazing! Like, I don't think I, it was yeah. literally like a Dyson on reverse. Yeah, it, it was, was well, nuts. Yeah, I just love scaring people with it. And it just sounded so cool, and it had a lot of pull. Like and it was it fun did to have drive. Pull. It, it was really fun. was fun to drive yeah. when it was happy. Yeah, and then uh, the, kind of the nail in the coffin 
after going through all the problems and tuning and stuff like that couple is cam uh, yeah a couple camshafts happen too yeah eight upper yeah. cams but again that happens on pentastars anyways yes. regular pentastars have a tendency to chew up the cam chew up shafts, cams but you wouldn't see it as quickly usually you see it eighty thousand kilometers so that's what about fifty something thousand miles but we were seeing it pretty damn quick we after we put in there. just below or above twenty thousand yeah so we were seeing it right away so we replaced cams kilometers. yeah kilometers. just google it it'll change yeah. into miles yeah um yeah, so once we did that, I think the ending was is that we sent uh, you and Sean down to Anza Borrego in California, and we had also done a supercharger, in even though we yeah. said, Sean, please don't do this. Please, please don't don't make us do this. Um, but we did. Like, we ended up putting a supercharger in his, um, and you guys went on a trip to Anza Borrego, and maybe talk a bit about how that went, because on the way back, it was the Well, phone I did and, a lot of service work yeah. in an O'Reilly's parking lot. They were very, <laughs> they were very helpful yeah. at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they let me dispose of all the fluids I took out. Oh, that's nice. And uh, they didn't mind me servicing in the parking lot two vehicles at the same time <laughs> while Sean watched me. Oh, uh, by all means, make friends with a mechanic. It'll save you a lot. Uh, don't try and pay him in beer. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. If he's a good mechanic, he has money to buy beer. He doesn't need to be handed beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Donuts, though, help. Oh, Donuts do help. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, so you're in a Riley's parking lot. Because, again, people don't understand. You also have to replace the supercharger oil yes. every... How often so, I, I forget, forget what it was, but there was a break-in period, too. So right, Sean yeah, yeah. was in a bit of break-in period, and I right. was already past that. Yeah. But supercharger oil is... Uh, well, it's not easy to get to in a parking lot to yeah. change it. But yeah. we still managed to do all that and do oil changes, and yeah. the oil didn't smell all that great. And, yeah. Um, but all in all, yeah. eventually... <laughs> Someone knocked at the door of the engine block. Yes. Yeah. There was a bit of a, <laughs> a knocking sound. <laughs> when you came back, I remember that too. It's like he went nuts like, going over the entire engine trying huh. to find out exactly where this noise is coming and let from. Me tell, I did yeah. everything I could to yeah. look for that noise. Yeah. I had the yeah. transmission out. Yeah, we thought and it was why a did I have it up? Yeah. Because my buddy, who yeah. is also now my lead tech here, yeah. thought it might be a torque converter. Yes. And man, everything we used, <laughs> every stethoscope, audio recording, yeah. made it sound like it came right from the torque converter. Right, yeah. So we sent the torque converter for inspection. We were so frustrated at the time, we didn't bother to realize that sending the torque converter for the inspection, <laughs> the only way to inspect a torque yeah. converter yeah. is cut it in half. Yeah, you got to cut it in half. It's like, okay, well, it's fine. Well, and that's great. And they don't just put it back together. Yeah, to buy another So one. we had to buy another $1,000 torque converter. So that didn't work. So we put it all back together. And then we're like, <laughs> we put it all back together. The noise oh, did not man. change yeah. at all. Yeah. Like you talk about being defeated. This was a constant defeat that just kept happening. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the next night we pulled the transmission out again by an inch. Yes. Yeah. And we ran it not connected to the transmission, which was entertaining in itself. Yeah, that was uh, fun. And that's when we could pinpoint the noise was in the lower block because we didn't have a transmission connected. Right. We didn't have a belt on. Yeah. And, like, yeah. we knew exactly where it was coming from. So that caught a whole bunch of different issues. We had a couple things we could do. Well, so, we basically, at that point, we had an awesome truck with an engine that was <laughs> totally messed that we up. we didn't get to use yeah. the truck much for yeah, like a year. we didn't get to use it much, but we had a lot of fun with it. Again, the supercharger was awesome, but at the end of the day, these yeah. engines cannot take those... It doesn't matter what manufacturer you're talking yeah, about. The manufacturer has nothing to do with it. You're putting... It's just yeah. not built strong anymore. Yeah. Like, so unfortunately, that is what it is. So we uh, went to our friend, uh, Rich uh, Hamlin at the time, went to our friend and just said, uh, we have a proposition for you. Well, um, actually, before that, we yeah. had to decide what we could... What we had to do. We had multiple choices. Yeah. We could A, order a long block and put an engine in the darn thing. Yeah, that's true. We so did that was on the that. table. And then it was like... I just wasn't going to do that, but I, I remember. But yeah. we couldn't put it back to stock <laughs> yeah. because we had removed a bunch of stuff with the supercharger yes. yeah, install. And it would have cost a couple thousand to buy those things yeah, to, to put back. it back. Put it back, yeah. So, yeah. and then I stumbled upon one of the... I forget which influencer told me, but uh, America's Most Wanted. Yes, yeah always has engines for sale for like 1500 bucks or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they always pull yeah, yeah, a new that. vehicle. I remember so that. I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, so we can put an engine in for 1500 bucks. That's yeah. not insane. No, it's not crazy. But it was 1500 American, and yeah. then I had to make it here. Yeah. <laughs> and then it came down to, I just asked them right out. I'm like, yeah. can I just buy a 392 from you? Yes. Yeah. And they said, no. 
<laughs> and I'm like, what does it take to yeah. buy a 392 from you? Yeah. Well, you got to buy three or four engines. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And come down for training before we'll send those engines to you. Yes. I was like, huh. Huh. So, so thus, we called up Rich and said, so Rich, we have a proposition in for you. In <laughs> passing, I told Rich this. Yeah. And then that yeah. led to yeah. six phone calls a night <laughs> yeah, while he was revved up. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were off to the races. Yeah. I got sent down to Michigan. Beautiful yeah, facility the down there. Got to basically, I got to help them install an engine for free labor. So that was neat. You did a Hellcat, didn't you? Yeah, Hellcat we did a Hellcat gladiator. into a Gladiator. Yeah. And, and like it five ran days. before I left in yeah. five days. Yeah, just five banged days. through yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, great team of guys. Yeah. Lots of good food around there. Some yeah, good barbecue joints. Yeah. I remember I grew up across from Michigan. So yeah. um, came back, engine arrived. Yeah. Went in, truck went, went under the puppy. knife. Yeah, truck went under the knife. And yes, yeah. we changed it in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. changed so many. We've done them in snow in the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. I More I Canadian than anybody. Realize that we're just a small shop here, but. Um, it's not shop. the size of the yeah. shop, Paul. It's how you use it's it. It's how you use it. That is correct. Like, have you that not correct. understand how this I, works? I should know that by now. But yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're putting the 392 in there. Um, and going through that whole process the first time, it actually went pretty straightforward. It yeah. was pretty much bang on perfect. Yeah. Like, I don't think we had a hiccup. Yeah. The only hiccup is was, I think, waiting to get the PCM back to start it. Yeah, so you got to send the PCM back to them, the original one. They and sent then you that one was back. Like, I think yeah. that was the longest. Everything went in yeah. and was done with, like, a flawless, which is a major undertaking to begin with, and yeah. we had no problem yeah. with it. Yeah. And then it started, and it was mean yeah it was mean but then yeah <laughs> we had already my passion for this mojave <laughs> yes, had moved passion? on what's your passion sir <laughs> um besides donuts and yeah. hell divers too yeah. <laughs> uh music music but the year was really rough to not have a vehicle that you could go and do yeah. all the fun things go wheeling with sean go to the states yeah uh yeah. stuff like that yeah so I had a bad taste in my mouth for the vehicle. I could have put any engine in this I wanted. I wouldn't have kept it because it's just memories. I w it's like a bad ex-wife that just had to go. I don't know if any of you had a practice marriage, but <laughs> you had <to> <laughs> I did. And uh, oh, man. it haunts my days. But I'm still on my practice marriage 20 plus years later. <laughs> Do you want me to give you the name of a lawyer? No, it's all good. Okay. Man. I love my wife. Okay. Um, yeah. So doing that. It had to go. It had to go. And uh, we moved on to the next thing as we do here, right? Because generally, yeah, we keep our vehicles about, uh, about a year, generally. But let's be honest. Yeah. People were so excited. Oh, they were. Yeah, they this were. This sold yeah. before it was set onto its tires. That's true. Off the hoist. That's true. The before we finished the engine conversion, it was The sold. guy behind this camera right yes. now. Yeah had to have it he just had to have it and we just did everything we could to make that happen yep and he liked it so much he kept the wicked graphic i know i know so that's awesome i appreciate that no it looks it looks really cool so he's had a blast with this vehicle it's had a wheel change too hasn't it i think we changed wheels on it tires no oh no i changed wheels three times right. before he right. got it right so these are still the same wheels yeah i think he's due for some tires due to horsepower yeah. I remember um, when we got this one done, because this was kind of the base for all our marketing to get into these, because we've now done 15 of these, yeah. right, in, in one year. Um, and so just this was the first one to kind of get going. I remember our friend uh, Jordan Herwig. We had Jordan. Yep. Uh, we said, hey, we need an amazing burnout video of this thing. Yeah, because um, we're rock crawlers. We're not yeah. uh, so he, burnout uh, enthusiasts. He, he's the one that's, you know, you probably see that clip that's on our website and a lot of our videos is where basically this thing is doing a full-on smoke and burnout, and it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and that's Jordan driving it uh, with a huge smile on his face. So, and this yeah. is the least powerful version yeah it's the least powerful one yeah yeah but this is the one i tell everyone they should get oh for sure for like sure. it's yeah. reliable to yeah. a t yeah like yeah. the higher you go the more money you spend and the more gas you throw yeah it's just the way it is yeah so but it has been it is a phenomenal vehicle and i miss driving it because it was comfortable to drive the suspension we did end up putting in it right yeah which will quickly run down that i did every piece teraflex owned <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. I was one of the first people to get the extended travel system they debuted at Easter Jeep that year. Yeah. So it amazing has, rear travel. It's just the, it's like uncanny. 17, 18 inches of rear it's travel. Just insane it's rear travel. So it's got so all the control arms, yeah, three and a half arms. inch coils front and rear. Plus we spaced the rear a bit because to compensate for the Mojave, Mojave speed bump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then obviously the fully adjustable Falcon shocks, steering stabilizers. Um, 
all the upgraded kits oh the track bars i think are done yep. and yeah everything and then it has a drive shaft that was done with the yeah the, 1350 drive shaft the v8 put in v8 so put that's in. in there yeah but all in all the thing just goes yeah and it's a lot of fun 37s to drive. which is my go-to size i be, i don't believe you need a bigger size than that yeah. i've never not got where i'm going no matter who i'm with yeah so it's great and depending on the vehicle not this one yeah. you can fit them under the bed yes you can so that helps because it takes up a lot of room in this tiny little what three foot five bed yeah yeah. And so just being fully clear with people on this Jeep, it's got a lot of kilometers on it. This thing has seen a lot of action. Um, and so what's broken on it right now is we've got uh, catalytic converters. Oh, right? yes. The catalytic converters. Yeah. Uh, it had so much fun off-road, it shook the cat to death. <laughs> shook him, shook him uh, out of Just one of them, yeah. though. So yeah. it still yeah. has one. But yeah. we have new ones to go in, so we're going to get that Yeah, they, re they replaced them under warranty and sent them to us. Uh, so we the just factory have to get them in steering after, like, it's probably over... 60,000 kilometers on this now. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's finally tired. Yeah. And that's yeah. a lot of off road miles yeah. or aggressively driven miles. Yeah. Um, so it's going to get some steering upgrades and some other pieces to just, yeah. you know, maintenance, just getting yeah. some things fixed. Yeah. And the owner of this vehicle drove it uh, so insane and was just laughing with his hair on fire that uh, he blew apart the front. Uh, well, it didn't blow apart. It snapped yeah. in two. Just it's like a wishbone. It's like a wishbone. And that was yeah. the end of that. I hope he made a wish before it he happened. He is the only person I know. Yeah, I know. I, I, you see it Personally, online all the time. People breaking where the, the front axle disconnect yeah, is. That's where it breaks. But um, I don't know, man. He's the only person I know. You don't see it all the time, though. No. It's not that often. No. But you put enough horsepower into a cross ditch and that's fun true. things happen. That's true. Like everyone gets to have fun. I don't know. Full Except disclosure. The guy paying the bill. He, he sent me the photo when it happened and I just laughed. Full disclosure, <laughs> any photo you send me of broken pieces, I start off laughing. That's true. I start laughing. I'm like, how did that happen? Because there's a story behind that. Yeah. But uh, I've, yeah. Because I assume somebody yeah. heard that when I broke the diff out of the ram on the yeah. hill in the desert, yeah. they were laughing. Yes. I was laughing. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. It was pretty it was, it, I'm just happy it wasn't a hotter day. I, ju I just, yeah. When things break, I think that's just an opportunity to learn. But, uh, uh, you know, we're smoking like a we're true, smart. like, I don't know, teacher or minister. <laughs> And the thing is, I've always got you, so you're always with me. Yeah, but except uh, tracks. Yeah, yeah, except tracks. He was not. He was not on for the for the tracks. But I voted no. He voted no for the tracks on the ram. But that's that's for nobody listens. That, that's for another talk, another day. But um, but yeah. So uh, doing the, these kind of vehicles again, Mojaves. We see them all the time now. We're basically swapping suspensions completely. Everybody's super happy. They can go do the when they understand. And, when, when we the, can, yeah. when we explain yeah. it, we show them. We explain. Yeah. It. it completely makes sense, and it yeah. does. Yeah. Like. How do you think it's that soft? It's yeah. because it, yeah. it doesn't deal with any weight. It's being light. It's like, it's not going to work if you put anything on it. Yeah. yeah. And if they have done stuff and they're like, well, it's doing this. And you explain to them why they're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. How much for a lift? Yeah. And that's usually just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been doing this. We do this quite a bit because again, the Mojave, at least up here in Canada is pretty damn popular. Like there's quite a few of them. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, it's you beautiful looking truck. Lots. It's a great truck. I would own another one. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just awesome. So. But um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today is our first podcast. Just to put all that to bed, yeah. feel free if you still have questions on Mojave's and what oh, yeah, you just, do to uh, it, yeah. give me a shout. I spent half of my time doing it and I still haven't started that 900 number. No, you haven't. Yeah. We gotta For win. those of you millennials, yeah. that's when yeah. you could call and talk to fancy <laughs> women at night and be charged per minute. And be charged per minute. We should start something like that. Do yeah. you have a Mojave? Yeah. Press five. Yeah, press five. And cool. you're just gonna go straight to Enter that. your credit card here. We but we don't it's mind. We'll gladly no. set you up. Yeah. Over half our customer base that we work on in the shop comes from the States. Yeah. That's, so, uh, and most people don't know, because again, this will be seen and listened to by people in the States, because we're pretty well known in the United States, is we're pretty much on the border. We're like 15 minutes from the Canada border, Canadian border. Um, yeah. If you're in Blaine, yeah. Washington, you could hit me with a rock. You could pretty much. Yeah. Don't hit yeah. me with a rock, please. It's yeah, just don't. not nice. But yeah. So that's essentially people come up here. And so we've had so many people come up. We've had yeah. Texas, North Carolina, Idaho, Montana. Lots uh, of the states Nevada. surrounding Washington. Yeah, like obviously. you get your Washington, Oregon, yeah. kind of California on the West Coast. But yeah, we have a lot of people come up here, get their vehicles modified, drive them back across the line. We'll give you all the paperwork, even stuff to get the tax back. Yeah. Unless you don't pay Canadian you tax. You save money. Yeah, you can save money. Canadian dollars worth nothing. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing the, yeah, and exactly for that is our Canadian dollar is so depressed right now that uh, American cash is worth quite a bit. So um, yeah. yeah, so that's generally, you know, hit us up, call us, whatever you need to do to, to talk about it. We love talking Jeeps. It's the one thing we do here. Um, but yeah. 
So that's uh, that's our episode for episode number one. Number two, um, put in the comments uh, below or just let us know or hit us up on what you think the uh, the next uh, podcast should be about. By all means, if you want to let us know what you'd like us to talk about or yes. if your mom has some suggestions yeah, or wife or girlfriend, I don't mind. I, I'm not an ageist no. person. No, we don't mind, man. We're, we're for all ages. I'll flirt with anyone. We're, we're for all ages. It's all good. But uh, yeah, so uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, just wanted to thank uh, Beardo or Stefan behind the camera. He's uh, an amazing friend of ours who put this all together with these fancy microphones. That, Don't worry. Uh, we'll get him set up on a computer so he can Google shit as we need it. Yeah, we'll get yeah, exactly. Like, we'll do that kind of thing. That's like the next phase. We'll yeah, be calling things phase. out to him, whatever. But yeah, We've uh, but got you know, plans, guys. Yeah, but huge thanks to him for purchasing this truck, keeping it in the family. I really appreciate that. It's been a lot of fun. We've done a lot of learning on this thing, being able to see it reach high kilometers and uh, and go on adventures. So that's great. Um, and then thanks for doing all the uh, the microphones and the and the lighting and everything in here. Uh, just awesome. Couldn't have done it without you. So thanks, bud. Um, yeah. So I think that's uh, we'll call it a wrap. But uh, that works. Very good. Good talking to you, man. Hell divers. Hell divers. Let's do it. You have been listening to. Tales of Romance and Seduction in the Mojave, where two dudes, one wrench. If you'd like to support our team, check out our website at epic-4wd.com, where you can purchase products for your Jeep Wrangler or Gladiator, lovingly crafted by Canadians with above-average intelligence. Stay tuned for more tales to come. And most of all, tell your mom we say hi. And thanks for the cookies. We really appreciate it.